You know that it is really about Rasta liberty. And next to the beautiful John 9, we have the singer, poet, and chanter of Midnight, Vaughn Benjamin. <laughs> Welcome everybody again. I said, you know, I so said, David, you want to put the first question you said, so I... Yes, um, so we just, the film we just saw, Escape to St. Croix, it gave some background about the island and it mentioned that it had been colonized by seven different nations, including the Danish. And it was also mentioned in the film that it's presently, uh, it was described as an unincorporated territory of the United States. So Vaughn Benjamin, I was hoping you could just enlighten the good people here at Rototom Sunsplash a little bit more about what does that status actually mean for ordinary people in St. Croix and the U.S. Virgin Islands? What is the relation like between St. Croix and the U.S. mainland? Well, first of all, we in the Caribbean, we are a diaspora taken out of Africa. Now, I'm hearing that I'm close to Gibraltar, right? And from Gibraltar down to the Caribbean is a current um, in the ocean that is six months out of the year. One direction and six months the other direction. So it is possible to go straight off the coast of Spain down into the Caribbean. Now, you have mystics in America, man like Edgar Casey, that claim the God consciousness, the fourth dimensional God consciousness, would rise again in the earth out of the mid Atlantic ridge in the Caribbean Sea. Are you familiar already with this? Anyone? Mm, on a very minor level. But enlighten us further, please. So, um, in terms of now, when they said four dimensional consciousness, what we know as three dimensional consciousness is height, uh, weight, and depth spatiality. And the fourth dimension to them is the place that does not answer to third dimensional instruments. <laughs> okay? Now, just to know that Sedona, um, Edgar Casey, all the different mystics supposedly of the course, eh, know that alongside the same, the same prophecy which was told of 400 years, 400 years the Bible said, know for surety thy children shall be a stranger in a strange land. They shall afflict them with hard labor. 400 years. Now, 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue. 1892 Haile Selassie is born. 400 years. Now, 1607 to 2007 is upon the coinage of America to commemorate Jamestown Kalani as well as the Queen was in Jamestown to commemorate 1607 to 2007, 400 years. Now, <laughs> and anyone in the room, not the panelists, anyone in the room, feel free to speak. <laughs> I would like you to tell me what people on the globe have a story of 400 years traceable, tangible, touchable, besides these people in the Caribbean Sea, the entire room, <laughs> the entire room. Yeah, so Vaughan is putting a question to you good people, and who would like to uh, give us an answer? Well, maybe we can talk a little bit about um, the manifestation of Rastafari consciousness in St. Croix as you understand it, Vaughan and the relation between the movement in Jamaica and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay. As Diana can see, right? 
sitting with I ones like Janai, Mikey General. These are people who are familiar to my, me before this situation now. The creed of Rastafari has always been word, sound, and power. Word, sound, and power, consequent power. However, in my own studies, I found that there's a hidden code in the English language. And um, the code creates, encircles polarity, both extremities of polarity. Now, if I should dare to tell you any such thing like this, I should have some four instances, right? For instance. Well, for instance, C-O-N-E is cone, and the same word says E-N-O-C, Enoch. C-O-V-E is cove, and the same word says evoke. T-I-M-E is time, and the same word says E-M-I-T, emit. T-I-D-E is tide, and the same word says E-D-I-T, edit. O-R-I-G-I-N is origin, and the same word says N-I-G-I-R, or Negro. O-R-G-A-N is organ, and the same word says N-A-G-R. N-O-E-L is no L, the same word says L-E-O-N, Leon. If you should keep looking, you will find the polarity story in the English language easily found. L-O-V-E says long, E-V-O-L, evil is the, is the inverse square law. <laughs> L-I-V-E says live, E-V-I-L, evil, is the inverse way of L-I-F-E is life, and the same word is E-F-I-L, evil, is the inverse way of S-L-A-V-E is slave, E-V-A-L-S, is the same inverse way of <laughs> Evils, <laughs> and they all said evils. L-E-V-I is Levi, L-E-V-E-E -E -E is levy, E-E-V-E-L is also evil the inverse square law. So, I'm here to say that we were told as youth from our old people, word, sound, and power. Most of the people didn't bother to take a look and see what words are we talking here. V-E-T-E-R-A-N, veteran. N-A-R-E-T-E-V, narrative. Who did that? So, I want to show you, this is why I'm going extreme and long and far. M-E-E-T, meet. T-E-E-M is the same word, must meet. Team. L-O-O-T is loot, the same word is tool. L-O-O-T-T-O-O-L, same word. This is the inverse square law that we exist among. W-A-L-K is walk. K-L-A-W. T-E-L-K is talk. K-L-A-T, a boy clad your kayata. So, <laughs> the whole law is visible, tangible, touchable, and uh, to be found in the language we speak on the West Side. <laughs> well, in moving closer to the music, now it's been remarked that at the present moment in time, Perhaps there's uh, something of an unusual situation where the music and culture of Jamaica is influencing the music and culture of the U.S. Virgin Islands, and at the same time, the music and culture of St. Croix has gone back to influence the music and culture in, of Jamaica. So, Janine, maybe can you tell us a little bit about this cross-fertilization and these influences traveling across these different parts of the Caribbean? I still want to interject still to say that this is not music to we. These are our fathers. These are the men them in Jamaica and in the rest of the Caribbean who, who set down principles, standards of living that we may not be lost. We were taken away and lost with amnesia. These men is not people for us to admire and who is good and who is very good and who was my favorite. These men, these Jamaican elders, are the men who was there to make sure that we were not totally lost and unprincipled and without standards and etiquette and moral and protocols. So, 
So if, if I understand what you're saying correctly, then you took guidance and inspiration from the, the elders of reggae from Jamaica. Yes, John Ayan. Greetings to all in the name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I and Empress Menin I, the balance. I give thanks for the question which speaks to a unity among all of the diaspora, as Brother Vaughan shared with you before. And you will find that those of the Rastafari elders, when you ask them questions, they will answer in a similar way. And you will almost need translation if you are thinking on a, on a physical, mundane, you know, on that level. But it is very important to understand this session is not about reggae music in Rastafari. It is about Rastafari. And reggae music is one of the many things that Rastafari has given the world. There is no discussion to nitpick about who gave who what first and who gave who what after. It is a constant evolving and a sharing. And as, we, as the world is made smaller by technology and transportation, it's just more access that we have to each other. And it will continue to evolve. And we must just always remember that those of us that say Rastafari, we are practicing a liberty. We are not in the music business. We are living this life, and music is a part of it right now in this incarnation. And when it is that Jack gives us some different work to do, we, we won't necessarily see us on the music page anymore. But the work will continue; it will evolve. Whether we are in the Caribbean diaspora, in the Caribbean as the diaspora, or whether we are here in Europe, or whether we are home in Africa. The work will continue and it will evolve as though it is one consciousness because it is one consciousness. Yes. The, the struggle in the whole world is the same. The struggle in all earth is the same. Um, right now the earth is figuring out that blood has a similar ke chemical matrix to hemoglobin and chlorophyll and we're figuring out what's happening little by little the people. So this is how the changes will come. Now in, the, in St. Croix, it's the same like everywhere. Wherever there is um, lack of understanding, wherever there is a lack of research, scientific experimentation and all of the above, the people will be blind to a certain extent. Um, for instance, uh, Bolt, Bolt, um, the sprint out Jamaica, the champion, the world champion. Now, we heard that he was told that he shouldn't eat yams because there are steroids in the yams and steroids in the breadfruit, you know, and steroids in the eggplants and steroids in the okra. Natural steroids. Now, because, as Janine was saying earlier, the space-time continuum has been bridged. Haile Selassie I the first spoke about the bridging of the space-time continuum where it will be no longer be difficult to speak to someone immediately. There will be no six-month letter by ship. And so now, which means exposures are maximum and optimum. As soon as something becomes discovered, the entire world has access and tangibility, touchability to it. So now, Knowledge will increase at a much more rapid pace, like all the books said. Knowledge increase right now and cover the whole earth like the waters cover the sea. So these are the things which we see taking place now, now, now. You see why the children of the earth, um, they, they come of their own volition. No one forced them. They're beautiful and they still come. Out of many things they could be doing, they come because this is about preservation of your soul, your family, your country, your nation. It's all the same. You see, it's all interrelated, like all disciplines. Science is not different from math, it's not different from reading, it's not different from psychology. There is no separation between any of the disciplines. They are all interrelated and interconnected. So this is the thing now we are trying to do to our people. 
to help us to overstand better that we make better decisions. Now, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, the first, this much I want to say. When His Majesty spoke on the floor of the Geneva Conventions, his speech was among all of the picked man, the picked man of every nation, the chosen diplomat and envoy of every country, the man who is picked by his country to represent. So quite simply, what we're having here is a showdown, a sound clash of the whole world. So when His Majesty said, today for me, tomorrow for you, you light a match in Ethiopia, will burn down the whole of Europe, and you saw it. So the words of His Majesty are not, uh, to us, they are not allegoricals, they are not metaphoricals, they are not metaphysicals, they are not in the sky, God blowing thunder. They are on the earth, and they are reality on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you for.